Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Aditya and today's video is going to be a practical guide to um, OAuth 2.0 and specifically I'm going to show you how to use uh, GitHub's API. So um, this is a complex topic for some people and I thought it's best to you know break it down and make it as simple as possible because me understanding it in this particular way uh, simplified the entire thing and now it's easy for me to apply it and use it in all of the services even google twitter or facebook for example so i'm going to be explaining it using github's api and i find this to be very simple and easy to use and also very easy to register your app and get started other services like twitter and facebook uh, have a registration and verification process which might take some time and it's very common for your app to get denied so um, i think this is a very easy way and um, you know, to get started and get some practice so we're going to be actually building a very simple app and I'm going to show you how to implement it. We won't be completing the entire app, just the component uh, uh, which involves the um, OAuth process and uh, hopefully it'll be easy for you afterwards. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch over to my browser and I'm over in GitHub's you know, website. Just navigate to github.com, make sure you sign up. It's just a free account. Most of you should already know what GitHub is and you should have signed up already. So you can navigate over there. And once you're there, um, go over to the settings. So you can click on your profile picture at the top and then go to the settings page. So inside the settings page, you can navigate down to developer settings. And then there are three types of things, personal access tokens, OAuth apps and GitHub apps. So GitHub apps are generally things to extend GitHub itself. Um, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to be creating our own personal application and accessing the user's data. So that's going to be an OAuth app. And I've already signed up and you know registered my application. You can do, do it by registering a new one. So very basic information, just to add this stuff. So an application name, anything you need. Um, homepage URL, um, I recommend you to just add localhost and whatever port. So it can be 3000 or 5000. Um, whatever you want, uh, whatever you're going to use for your web server, give a sample description and then a callback URL. So again, this is going to be um, the localhost URL and then slash whatever you want, whatever URL is going to be for the callback. So for my purposes, I've just given slash callback. So do this and register it. I've already registered one. The reason I've done it beforehand is because I didn't want to expose the client secret. Um, this is something that I'm probably going to keep up and I didn't want to take the effort to blur it out. So I registered it beforehand. And once you're done, it should look like this. So it looks like I have one user. It's probably just me when I tested it. So I'm going to remove it and it should be back to um, zero users. So let me reload this page and it says zero users. So when you scroll down, your client ID is going to be that. This you can copy. This is just to identify your app. This can be exposed. In your front end in your client um, i can show to anyone it just identifies our app so perfectly fine the client secret is the important part which is like a password which has to be um, hidden that's why you can see uh, it's partially hidden and you can't see it so and it's only accessible once so make sure you copy it and save it properly in a safe place in your app or wherever you want um, the first time itself because otherwise you're not going to be able to access it you need to generate a new client secret Apart from that, um, you can fill up the rest of the information, your application logo, background color, the name, you should have done this already, and you should be good to go. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is, I think I'll switch over to um, uh, VS Code, and I have set up a sample application. So actually it's empty, I'm going to help you set it up. Basically what we're going to do is create a simple web server to um, create a sample starter application. So I'm going to use JavaScript and Node.js. It's very simple to use. So um, you can download Node.js by going to nodejs.org for all platforms. I have it installed. So with Node.js, you get NPM. So NPM is just a package manager and we're going to initialize uh, NPM use, using NPM in it. Um, run this command. We can go with all the defaults and this will generate a default package.json file. So with this file, we're going to start working. Um, now, what we're going to do is install a package. We're going to install Express. 
this is going to be a package which is going to allow us to very easily create a web server so the first thing we're going to do is create an index.js file simple javascript file and we're going to create a variable a constant called express we're um, basically um, requiring our express modular package that we just installed and now we can create another um, variable which is going to be app um, just call express and then we can say app.listen um, give a port number which can be 3000 for us and then this is just going to be an arrow function um, callback function and then I'm just going to log to the console saying we are running on port 3000 so this is the port I gave in my um, um, in the github page um, you know I said localhost colon 3000 so if you gave something else like 5000 make sure to give the corresponding number now we're going to create a few routes um, let's just create a root route um, app.get so a get request at the root route and we're going to just say um, you will have a callback function with request and response and then we're just going to send back some text so let's just say hello world right and then our second route so only two ones and then this is going to be slash callback this is what i have given for a callback route um, give whatever you want and then um, let's just send back um, it should have worked because when um, the you know github redirects us back to this callback route um, technically everything should have worked properly if it didn't work properly this is the step where we're going to find out so you know this is the boilerplate application what i'm going to do is um, switch over back to my browser and um, show you um, the documentation so um, this is the website um, github's documentation now uh, building OAuth apps and authorizing OAuth apps I'll, I'll link this in the description so that you can use it and we're going to use the web application flow so as you can see here what we're going to do is have some kind of button or link on our website and when the users click on that it's going to redirect them to github's page so they're going to log in with github with their username password on github and if github thinks that these are the actual right people and if they have access to the information they're going to redirect us back to our own website with um, a special code which we can later exchange for an access token so you can see the second step is users are redirected back to a website and github gives us a code we're going to give that code and exchange it for an access token the access token is the one that's going to give us access to everything right um so that's what we're going to do and this is the link that we're going to redirect the users to right so i'm just going to copy this we're not building the entire app so i'm just going to copy this and a new tab i'm going to paste this and we're going to start working so let's go back and see the different parameters that we need the first parameter is a client id so this is um, what we saw in um, our settings page for our app so we're going to add a question mark over here and then the name of the query parameter and then equal to followed by the value so it's just a key value pair let's go back to um, this dashboard or our settings page and copy our client id and paste it so we can paste it over here and let's go back to the documentation so next we need a redirect uri but this is optional we've already specified it in our settings so we don't need to use it it's going to use the default one that we have specified logins again um, 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 optional field scope we're going to leave it empty scope is very important for auth in general it tells us um, which parts of any app or service that we want to have access to so if we only need access to one particular part of the service there's no point in giving access to the entire thing that's just a huge security risk so right now i'm going to leave the scope empty because all we need access to is public information for this sample demo uh, and um, you can click on this and view a list of scopes so these are the list of scopes for OAuth, github OAuth, and you can use one of these scopes depending on what exactly you need access to so for example if you need access to um, a write to a particular repository you could add these scopes so that you actually have access to it but i'm going to leave it empty because i don't need access to it 
Next is state. State is just a string, and I'm I'm going on. I'm not going to use it for this tutorial. It's um, very overkill for um, this simple tutorial. This basically is a random string that you generate on your server. It's used to prevent cross-site request forgery attacks, as it says in the documentation. I am not going to get into uh, specifics over here, but this is very important in a production application just for security reasons. You're going to generate this on your server, and when GitHub responds back with the code and any other information, it's going to return the state also. And the server can verify if the state is good and if the server was the one that um, created the state in the first place. Next is allow sign up. Again, this is optional, and I'm not going to worry about this for this tutorial. So it looks like we're done. I'm going to hit enter, and you can see that it says authorize Altias test app. This is the one that I created. This is the name of my app, Altias test app, and I can see my logo also. And you can see over here what we're accessing is public data only. This is what the scopes um, directly relate to. So right now I left the scopes empty. I didn't have any scopes that I asked for. So I only have access to public data. But if I added the repo scope, for example, then I might have access to uh, write and read to repositories. So depending on what you need access to, you need to add the scopes. But for this tutorial, I have. Now I'm going to click authorize. And since I've already logged in with um, um, GitHub, so um, since I've already logged in with GitHub, it didn't ask me for my password. Otherwise, it might ask you ask it for you. Now, uh, funny thing is I forgot to start the server, but it, it actually worked. So once the authorization or authentication um, successfully took place, it redirected back uh, us to our own website at the slash callback route with our query parameter, the code and the actual code. The reason it says site can be reached is because I didn't start our development server. So let me switch back to VS code and let's run node index.js now our web server is running and if you reload this it works so we have our text it should have worked and it did work we have our code also now in an actual application what you would be doing is a client would send this code to your server i'm not doing this part so what i'm going to do is just copy this by hand and i'm going to open insomnia which is um, um you know just an application for us to test rest apis and if i'm right graphql apis also so inside um, Insomnia, you can create a new request. Um, I've created one called um, um, a get access token. And over here, we're going to give our URL. So let me just switch back to the um, browser and open the documentation just to um, explain it to you. So inside the um, documentation, um, you can see over here, it's asking us to make a post request. This has to happen from the server. So if it's a Node.js app, in Node.js, not from the client, the client side JavaScript. And over here, we're going to be making a post request to this API, um, this endpoint, and we need the following parameters. So the first three are required. The last one you don't even need, even though it's optional if it's mentioned, it's not at all required. Um, so we need our client ID, our client secret, which I've already copied and used. Um, it's okay if you see it over here. I'm going to um, revoke it or delete it afterwards at the end of the video. And then the code, which I just copied, which we got um, over here from GitHub. So um, that's what we're going to do. Let me switch over to Insomnia now and perform our request. So over Insomnia, we have our um, URL. It's a post request. That's the method. And under query parameter, so this is how the actual query is going to look with the question mark and the equal to sign. It's just a key value pair. We have our client ID, our client secret, and the code. This is what I added during testing. Let's replace it with our new code. And let's hit send. And we've got back our access token. So this access token is what gives us um, access to Git, the GitHub API itself. Now let's copy this and use it to access something. Now we have access to all of GitHub or whatever scopes we have access to. Now what I'm going to do is something simple and fun. Let's access what emojis we have available. So this is the URL. It's a get request and we need a bearer authentication. So we need a, a bearer authentication uh, method. So if you're going to do it manually, you will need to add a new header. Um, the header is going to be authorization if I'm right. And then the value is going to be bearer space and then your token. Now I'm not going to use this in Insomnia. There's um, 
um, feature to under authentication where you can choose it so it's bearer token and then just paste your token the prefix is bearer by default so you can leave it like that and if you hit send you get back su successful response so let's click on one of the links so i'm going to click on first place medal and it's going to open in the browser and you should be able to see the medal the github emoji so it actually worked and that's all you need to know for um, OAuth 2.0 and this is how you access GitHub's API. So if you're building an app, um, um, either a client-side app or um, server-side app, um, any web app in general, even a mobile app, this is how you use the GitHub API and you can authenticate or authorize users using OAuth. And the same thing um, applies for Google's um, OAuth, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, anything you want. Uh, the only difference is this is a little easy to get started with other um, applications you might have to verify your app and it'll take a little while so i hope this video was easy to understand and you got some value from it if you have any feedback or comments please let me know and i'll definitely um, take it into account for the next videos um, and uh, that's it so let's wrap up this video um, thank you for watching